everybody. My name is Kim Snyder. I'm the founder of Polo Skills Network. I'm uh, pleased to have you on the webinar this evening. We're pretty excited about uh, what, what we have to show you this evening. I want, just want to quickly run through some housekeeping issues with you. Um, the main one is this, uh, anytime that you do something that's heavy, graphics heavy like video or, or images like we're going to do tonight, um, it's really helpful for you all to make sure you have a, um, as much internet connection available as possible. So I would really encourage you to shut down anything on your computers that takes up, that's checking the internet. So Skype, email, anything like instant messenger. If you shut that down, your experience will be much, much better. Um, the other thing is to tell you that we are, um, Occasionally, you know, uh, GoToWebinar will have a glitch. Usually it, it, it's network traffic and it is almost always solved by you logging out and then logging back in. And when you come back on, it, it usually solves the problem. Um, thirdly, we will be archiving, uh, recording and archiving this webinar and posting it on the Polo Skills Network site uh, within a few days. So um, anything that you happen to miss, you should be able to go back and review that way. Um, this webinar is brought to you as a co-production of Polo Skills Network and the United States Polo Association. It's through the courtesy of the United States Polo Association and their underwriting that we were able to bring you this presentation. It is also through the generosity of the International Polo Academy, which is our presenter this evening, um, Charlie Froggett and Eduardo Amaja. And so with that, I'm going to uh, get right into the content. So Charlie, it's all yours. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and um, uh, good evening uh, to us over here in England. Uh, thank you very much, Kim, for having us. Um, it's great to make contact with everybody over in America. I'll get straight to it. I do apologize for the delay. I hope you understand my strong English accent, I'll try to speak as clearly and as slowly as possible. Um, so right on to um, our schedule for today, just a very brief intro to IPA, International Polo Academy, um, then into a couple of points on why video narrative is used, um, intro to DART, which are um, video narrative partners, then of course Eduardo Maja, um, who we use as a coach. Um, uh, the filming process, and then the analysis itself. We're going to go into Eduardo's technique. Eduardo has, um, uh, we've broken down Eduardo's technique into some detail. And then we're going to look at um, uh, a zero goal player um, from the US and look at a few of the areas that that, that player could improve on and just uh, make some key observations. Uh, and then if we have time, to, uh, a comparison. Um, just bear in mind, all of these videos will be available afterwards, uh, we will send around a link to these videos. Um, so whilst it's not possible to uh, view these videos in real time because of the bandwidth, um, we will be looking at stills today, what we call key positions, but I'll come to that. Um, we'll have we'll take a very, very brief look at, at um, how we view this analysis on an online platform. Then Kim, of course, will be questioning, um, hosting some questions. And for anyone who's interested afterwards, um, in video analysis or any of our related services, um, we'll tell you how to get in touch with us. Um, on to the next slide. So, a very brief intro introduction about International Polo Academy. Um, uh, we work uh, together with, with clubs, with players and, and teams to help them deliver excellence on and off the field. Uh, we do so in a very, um, in, a, in an institute in, uh, of sport approach and environment. Um, and since launching in 2009, uh, we've worked in, in over 10 countries. Um, we've worked with uh, beginners to professionals and players from uh, 10 years old to 60 years old. And um, we're working with local teams and up to high goal teams as well. Um, uh, so why video analysis? Um, we feel that video analysis is, a, is, a, is part of any academy. Um, uh, there, are, there are a couple of points. Um, that, uh, that scientists have brought to us. Um, overall, a coach's ability to accurately recall and process in, in information is limited. Um, you might be surprised to know that a coach, no matter he, who she or he is, can only process 30% of what he or she, or she sees. So however good your coach is, 
however much experience they have, they can only remember basically 30% of what they see. So, um, so our conclusion, therefore, there is a need to supplement the coach's subjective recall with the use of video analysis and statistical information as an external memory aid. Just a couple of shots on, on video analysis. We'll come to some to these in more detail. Um, so how do International Polo Academy use it? And just um, to make to be clear that anyone can use video analysis. We use it uh, to analyze riding technique, obviously the basis, the basis, basis of the game. Swing technique, obviously, is the most obvious one. And then game analysis, uh, uh, that includes game stats. And that uh, gives coaches a very good tool to, to show uh, teams, as well as individuals, how they need to improve. Um, today, we're going to be looking at swing analysis. Uh, or swing technique. Um, and then where our, view, our, our clients view their analysis, um, it's 2013 now, and the good news is you can view, view your analysis from anywhere, and an online TV platform is a great way to do that. Um, so let's move on. Eduardo Maja, um, I haven't done any bullet points because there's, there's a lot to say, but I've tried to condense this into a couple of paragraphs. I believe this, this PowerPoint will be available afterwards. But, um, Eduardo's background is uh, primarily as a veterinary surgeon, um, and his approach is extremely scientific and precise. Um, uh, he, his communication of horsemanship and, um, elements in particular are based on knowledge of the mechanics and makeup of the horse. Um, Eduardo is a serious technician in the ball striking department with an attention to detail which sets him apart. Um, we've seen Eduardo coaching uh, in four continents, uh, and uh, everybody, everybody that he's, he's taught has improved significantly, um, mostly because his, his approach is very, very objective, um, and it's very, very attuned to video analysis. Um, he has been in action in Zurich, and he has been in action in the UK. Um, our partners for video analysis are Darkfish. Um, it's a Swiss company. Uh, and they are the world leaders of video analysis in sport. Uh, almost all, uh, um, almost all uh, medal winners or, or national governing bodies at the Olympics recently are using Dartfish, both for individuals and teams. So um, this is our preferred partner. Um, they have uh, they've been going for 20 years, uh, and uh, you can see here some accolades and, and, uh, and prizes. Yes, but they really are the best. Um, a couple more, more slides again, over 400 medal winners at the Olympic Games. And you can see for yourself that um, it's not just, uh, just uh, uh, national governing bodies and federations, it's also broadcasting. But moving on swiftly, um, the process you need to understand is that you film somebody, you, uh, you analyze their technique, and then you share it by publishing it. Um, so that's, that's the process we're going to be looking at today. Um, of course, it's a, it's a multi-platform solution, uh, which you can view on your iPad, your iPhone, your computer, anywhere. Um, that's, that's a great way of communicating your analysis. Um, so right into the polo, um, I wanted to show you a couple of slides about how we film. So you, so you can just visualize um, how we would film uh, a player um, at a training session, uh, whether it be in Argentina or, or Europe. Um, this picture here, we were filming from the side. In this case, we're filming his, his riding technique. The most will be filmed from the side. Um, we also film from the other side. That's important in terms of identifying things like uh, things like balance. Eduardo will come to that. Um, again, from behind is a really good way of doing it. Uh, so it's, it's a it's a video gives you a very big picture, well, a very precise picture about um, about what a player okay, is doing. The camera does not lie. Um, an important part of this is um, obviously giving your students immediate feedback, um, just in the same way that coaches can only recall 30% of, of what they see. We'll find that um, when players can see what they're doing right or wrong, they improve significantly faster. Um, here's a picture of Eduardo in, in, in the clubhouse, giving some, some students immediate, some immediate feedback, um, and it works. Here's a quick, a quick slide of some team analysis. Um, but we're going to focus today on swing analysis. Um, 
So what I thought we'd do today to start with is just go straight into um, uh, the analysis of Eduardo's forehand. Unfortunately, I cannot um, uh, I cannot play it because um, the video won't let me stream it, or the Music won't let me stream it. But what we've done here is we've we've um, you'll see here a timeline um, of, of Eduardo approaching the ball and hitting it. Um, and during that time that timeline, we've picked out certain key moments in Eduardo's swing. Um, in fact, if there is a one more slide of that in it. Um, we're going to be talking about today the preparation phase, the hitting platform start, hitting platform, the backswing, the highest part of the backswing, the downswing, the contact, and the follow through. These are areas we look at with all our students. Um, and again, we're making key observations here. Um, obviously, uh, every coach is different, um, but these are certainly key observations that we make. Uh, we feel that these are really important. Um, elements that make up a player's swing. So here we go back to the software. Um, I'm going to maximize our view here so you have the best view. Um, and I'm going to invite um, Eduardo Amaja to, to join us. Just bear with me a second. I'm going to unmute Eduardo. Hello, Eduardo, can you hear me? Mm, yeah. Yes, yes, Charlie. Hello, how are you? Hello, uh, how are you working? Hi, how are you? Good afternoon, Eduardo. Yes. Good, good, good night for you. Good afternoon for me. Okay. Okay, Edward. So, um, Kim, are you happy for us to proceed and, and start talking? Can you... Um, yes, go ahead. Can you hear us okay? Yep. Right, okay. Right, so um, Eduardo, um, I'm going to start on, on, on this first slide. I'm going to click on the, the preparation phase. This is yes. our first key position of the evening. Um, and uh, I'm going to let you talk um, let you talk us through that. Uh, so this is the preparation phase. Um, this is the overall, um, the raw footage. And I'm going to click on this key position that we've, we've prepared earlier. And I'm going to allow Eduardo to to talk about that. Over to you, Eduardo. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, Charlie, uh, and I want to say that uh, first, uh, all this uh, preparation is a relaxed position. Force has to be the right lead, uh, right start in the heated position, and with the mallet up. You can see there in the in the video, in the, in the picture, you can see the mallet up and the difference when somebody is going with the mallet in front. All this relax except your adapters, and you have a very nice um, platform position. You can see there, you know, the knee, you can see the pick, and the stereo position, your elbow contact with the with the ribs, with the trunk, with the upper body, and it's very, very important, you know, the position of the mallet up. Uh, most of the mistakes of the beginners is to go with the mallet in front. This uh, is uh, producing uh, uh, problems in the, in the muscles, in the arm muscles. Uh, that is not necessary. That is not necessary. Go ahead. Next one? Next one, yes. So this is the hitting platform. Okay. This is, uh, you are, we are preparing now the platform, uh, focusing the ball, look at the position of the, the, the the stir and the platform is uh, horizontal with the ground. It's not uh, going down, you know, with the, with the toes. And uh, it's uh, getting now, they are working, you know, the adapters and the knees. Where right? the knees are in contact with the saddle. And you move your upper body in front, but never you, you, you lose your focus in the ball. You have to focus the ball continually. Go ahead. Charlie, is there any way we can make those photos um, keep them larger so everyone can can see them? They get a little bit small. Yes, no problem. My apologies. I was just trying to show the the the, the, the writing. No problem. I, I shall do so. Um, okay. Oh, much better. Thank you. 
you can see here, uh, you can see here, focus in the ball, position of the left hand in contact with the main of the horse. You can uh, put your weight, 20% of your weight, 60% is in the right stirrup, and the other 40% is in the left stirrup. It's very important the position of the mallet in the beginning of the 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 back swing, the back swing here. Don't forget to focus on the ball and you keep the distance in order to make uh, exactly the timing. Go ahead, Charlie. Now we're going to the back swing. Uh, the body weight, you can see in the stirrup side, hidden stirrup side. The knee is working as a caliber. Uh, left hand with the reins on horse mane. And extended elbow, mallet arm, angle 90 degree approximately. It's very important now the caliber with the knee. So you with the knee, you don't go with the upper body down. You just go with the knee and you you measure the distance between your hand and the ball. If you go too much down, if you make too much angle, you know, with the knee, you go down and you hit the ground. So you have a, I said always, you have a computer in your mind and you have to make the calibration with the knee. Right? Go to the next one. You don't have to go full screen, Charlie. I think that view right there is, is sufficient. Um, just when you had the writing, it was hard to see. Okay. Thank you, Kim. Okay, you can see there in the left, the left side, you can see the, the, the hand is lying in the main and supported 20% of the weight, your weight, the player weight. Then you can see the different angles with the with the hand with the arm and the hand and the, the wrist in the in the in the up up of the swing you know the position in the back swing the upper of the swing you have a 90 degrees with the wrist and then 80 degrees with the arm uh, it's very important now to maintain this angle in order to contact the ball before you contact the ball this angle is uh, the wrist angle it's very important because many beginners, they put straight the mallet. They don't make this, they don't respect this angle till the moment that they hit the ball. Uh, you will see in the next, uh, the next uh, picture, the next video, you will see exactly what I'm telling, trying to tell you now. So you can go to the next one. It's important, the calibration with the knee. Huh? Now we're starting, you know, the, the downswing. And you can see the angle between the arm, the wrist, and the mallet, more or less 90 degrees. So all the time you 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 maintain your your position till the moment that you contact the ball. Uh, we are coming from the this position is um, is uh, we 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 call um, the palm of the the, the hand is. Is uh, over is, is uh, showing up out. It's a, a supinate position, and then in the moment that we contact the ball, contact the ball, we change from supination to supinate to pronate. This is the moment that the the mallet is straight. We will see in the moment that we are contact the ball, and then it's coming, it's coming. You know, the swing is finishing. You know, with the with the pronate. So we go to the next one. We go to the next one and we will see now the contact with the ball. Exactly the contact with the ball has to be just when you put your 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 your, your head is aligned is aligned to on top of the ball. Hand and arm on the mallet is in one line. Left hand with reins still on horse mane. And very important the knee caliber. I told you about the knee caliber because it's very 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 important. You, if you if you use it, the knee calibration, but you don't go with the upper body down. Um, most of the beginners they go down with the upper body. That is wrong. You can completely ruin your your swing. Um, 
the, the, it's very, it's this, this reason. And you can see now the feet, the, 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 the heel of the boot is going to the back because it's, a, it's an action reaction. In the moment that you contact the ball, you will see that the, 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 the feet is going to, to the back. Go to the next one. After the goal that we start the follow through is uh, is a very important. We have here uh, we are off of the seat, very important too. So we, we follow the ball. The knee is uh, fixed on the seat. Uh, foot back. I told you about this, and elbow moves moves up and towards and forward. Sorry, up and forward. So, Charlie, we've had some feedback from listeners. A few people have said, <laughs> different from me, they said actually it was more helpful to be able to see the notes, so it helped them to understand Eduardo better if they could read the notes at the same time he was talking. So um, I don't know if that's okay. true for everyone, but I've been overruled on that. So why don't we, why don't we try that? Um, hold on. Um, okay, so um, which which notes in particular are we looking at? Sorry, um, um, no. Keep as you're going. Just show your show your notes on the bottom so that they can see them too, and that helps them understand what Eduardo's saying. There you go. Okay, just on the on the contact. They're, they're not on all of the slides, but this one. That's fine. On the, for the contact, yeah. Mhm. Mm Um, just to be clear, that we will be um, sending people a video, a, a video, a video, uh, and also you can access all of these key positions on the video as well. So you you will be able to refer back to these. Um, we will send you the video um, with, with access to these um, after the, the webinar. Um, is that okay, Ken? Okay. Um, shall I shall I go to the next slide or? Follow through. Okay, so I think it's the next one, shall we? Okay. Next one? Next one. Yeah, this is the end. This is the end. The end of the follow through. We still off of the seat. The knee is fixed on seat. Foot back. And elbow move up and forward. And we are following the ball, right? Without pulling the reins. It's very important. Don't pull the reins and don't try to go back, you know, with the with the with the upper body. So you're still in this position. This is the the finish of the follow through. Okay. Uh, the mallet has to be in the same plane of the the forehand, the upside forward, not crossing to the other side, right? The same plane. So, so Kim, are you happy to? So we've come to the end of the end of these these key positions on Eduardo's uh, forehand. Would you like to? Yeah. So, shall I go into the next player, or how would you like me to proceed? Yep. Yeah, so personally, what um, just it, what would be helpful to me because there was a lot of clicking through that. Um, so, Eduardo, could you just sort of again so summarize and just uh, you don't need to move anything, Charlie. But so just talk through the key points of each of those. Uh, you know the platform preparation platform backswing downswing etc so just very quickly run through those what are the, so if I'm trying to improve my swing what are the key points that I should have taken out of that that I can then take into my practice and work on please okay the first one is uh, in order to, to show and to improve the swing uh, we did the preparation uh, I have to make a key observations like uh, first the horse has to be in the right lead. 
most of the players at the beginning they doesn't care about it and they go with the, the left league and uh, the course uh, in the right league with the forehand uh, when you hit the offside forward is easier if the horse is in the right league. This is one of the things very, very important. Um, uh, the mallet up, I told you before, is very, very important and also to be relaxed, not to be, uh, uh, I would say, unrelaxed. You know, you have to relax. The only thing that has to be very really in contact with the horse and not relax is um, the adductors and knee. Huh? And you have to use the platter. But you start to use the platter from now on the preparation before you go to the ball. Right? This is the first one. Mm -hmm. The second one is uh, uh, when you start when you start the back swing, you are focusing the ball. Uh, you go with your hand straight to the back to the up position. Um, you use the platform and you make uh, you make very very important is to have uh, this 90 degree between the mallet and your arm so the i call you know the wrist action when you contact the ball start the wrist action uh, and you have to to use really this one and also important in this uh, this hitting platform this position is uh, calibration the knee caliber is to use uh, the knee to measure the distance between your hand and the ball, not to go down with your upper body. Another consideration is your left hand, you can support like a tripod, you can use your left hand and mane of the horse. Mm -hmm. These three things are really, very really important. The next one, the, the, the mallet is going down and you contact the ball. The moment you contact the ball, has to be one line between your arm, your wrist, and the mallet. Now your feet, your, your your yes, your feet is going to the back because it's the actual reaction in the moment that you hit the ball. Uh, again, the calibration with the knee is very important, and your hand has to be on top of the mane. If you see now the wrists are completely relaxed, you know they are not in tension. And you don't use in the reins in order to make your equilibrium on top of the horse. This is very important for the beginners too. So the horse is relaxed in the mouth. Uh, look at the position of your head on top of the ball. Very important too. Go ahead. Start the follow through. Look at the ball. And now we are off of the seat. The knee fix it on the seat, on the, on the saddle, uh, the foot is going to the back, and the elbow moves up and forward. You cannot finish, you know, the follow-through without going with the mallet in front and with your, your body and your, your upper body to the back. This is very important. Mm -hmm. You need some... Look at the position of the knee at the end. Hmm? Don't forget that your knees are, adductors and knees, they are very important in order to hit the ball and all the swing, all the swing, all the stroke, from the, the beginning to the last moment, uh, the follow through that we are, we are working now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you. That was that was great. So um, we're we're going to allow everyone to a ask questions at the end, but I have some specific questions before we move on. So um, with regard to the um, backswing, some yes. some instructors um, will talk about pulling pulling your arm back as if you're pulling back a you know a bow and a bow and arrow. So it's back and then up to that position that you're showing now with the mallet pointing forward. Um, but it looks like in your swing and what you're suggesting is it's more, it's um, actually one motion instead of two. Can you talk about that a little bit? Exactly what you say, exactly what you say. You can see the picture. Um, uh, it's like a bow and arrow. For me, it's like a bow and arrow, and it's, uh, it's two movements. But important is the elbow. The elbow 
you see the serpent in the elbow, it has to be in contact with your ribs. Otherwise, you make uh, you make the swing. Uh, you 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 lose accuracy. Agree. Uh, so it's very important the contact between your elbow and the ribs in the beginning. And in the same line, you go like a uh, bow and arrow. In the same line, it's two movements. The first one is contact with your ribs, with the elbow, and the second one is going to the back, to the up of the swing, the back swing, to the half of the back swing. Um, if you see now um, in the picture, uh, looks like uh, when you take the picture from the side, we are looking now, looks like my arm is going outside, but it's not. It's going to the same plane all the time. I respect the plane exactly in order to be uh, accurate. Right? Mm -hmm. And this is going to sound like a funny question, <laughs> but w so when I'm hitting the ball or when I, if I was doing coaching with you, yes, what are we trying to improve exactly? Is it, is it just, I mean, obviously we want to hit the ball, but, um, mm -hmm. but as I make incremental or small improvements in my swing, what should be getting better? Um, is it distance? Is it accuracy? Is it power? Is it what? What am I trying this, to? All this count for me is very important. The accuracy is very important because you want to put the ball in some place. Doesn't matter if it's a long hit or it's a short hit, but if you dominate the accuracy, it's very important. The first thing. Second thing is to be in the same plane. If you see. From uh, the rear, if, from, if you see from, if you take in front, you stay in front, I want to see only one plane between um, your shoulder, your arm, your, your hand, and the mallet. Otherwise, if you go to the other, to the other side, or you open the, the, the distance between your elbow and ribs, you destroy completely the thing. And the next one is the speed that you move your mallet, the speed. From this position, from the back, the back swing to the down swing, in the moment that you contact, is the, the speed of the mallet. I don't say power because I don't want to talk about power. You know, when you hit the ball, but this is the speed of the mallet. This is a really important to to give a, a distance to the ball. So these these three things, these three things are really important for me. Um, accurate is uh, accuracy is is really important. The accuracy, you know, and then the accuracy is when you move your mallet in the right position. It's going very, very close to your ribs, the elbow, and then you go to the back swing in perfect, perfect position. You start from the, we say, you know, from the high of the swing, highest position of the swing, we start to go down, but perfect. The speed of the mallet, the speed of the swing has to be uh, slow when you go to the back, to the back swing is you can count one, two, three, and then when you go down, you can only one. One, two, three, and then one, you go one, that means faster than the one, two, three, then you go to the back swing, right? You can count and say one, two, three, and then one is to go down and contact the ball. Maybe this helps you. Yes, and uh, I'm getting quite a few people saying that they really like um, the frame by frame that you're doing, Charlie. Can you do it all the way through this? Yeah, like that. That's really helpful. Yes, he can start, you know, from the beginning. You can go back, Charlie. Start from the preparation. Now, now it's coming. Slowly, relax. You see, mull it up. Hmm? The reins has to be, you know, in this position, sloping reins, not um, full contact with the horse. Just a little contact, but not, not uh, too much. Now it's coming the pre-swing, focusing the ball. Now it's going to the platform. We get the platform. Now we are going to the back swing.
now the elbow is in contact with the, with the, with the upper body, the ribs. Mallet is going up. The back swing. Maximum extension, now 90 degree with mallet and the, the, the arm, the arm. And now it's going down. Now it's the maximum speed of the mallet. Look at now exactly the contact with the head is on top of the ball. Mallet is going slow, stop there, Charlie. You see the mallet sleep with the 90 degrees till the moment that the, we nearly contact, we nearly contact the ball. Now you will see it's a snap action. It's like a hammer action. It's like a, eh? This is very important now. Hmm? You can see now the wrist action. Now the wrist action. Exactly now. Snap the ball. And start the follow through after the contact. Um, Eduardo, Samuel has a question. He says, um, how much is arm versus wrist in the middle part of the swing? Uh, you mean uh, talking about uh, speed, about power? Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, a lot of beginners in particular feel like they have to kind of snap their wrist somewhere in the swing versus just letting the arm swing through the, the plane. So in your mind, you know, how much of that is the muscles in the wrist and how much of it is just about your arm and your shoulder just following through? I would say that the arm is giving you um, uh, speed. The muscles of the arm are working with the speed and the the, the wrist is, is, is giving, you know, it's like uh, if you have a chain in your hand, you give the speed uh, of the, the, the chain with your arm, you start to move, you know, fast with the arm, the, the chain, in order to hit something, and then at the last moment you use your uh, wrist action. Even with the chain you can hit the ball. Forget about the mallet. The only way that I can hit the ball with the chain is using my arm, making speed, and then at the last moment with my wrist, I make the snap and I hit the ball with a chain. If I don't use the wrist, it's impossible for me to hit the ball with a chain. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is a perfect example. Or uh, let me to make this the next example with a hammer. If you want to put a nail with a hammer, if you use only the arm, maybe you make speed, but the, the, the nail is not going through very fast. If you use your your wrist action with the hammer, you will see that the knee, the, the nail is going very, very fast into the water or whatever, you know, you want the wall. You know what I mean? So it's a combination between your arm speed, power with the muscles, and wrist action at the end. Hmm? You can see the picture. Hmm? Yes. Yes. If I come, you know, if I come without the angle, probably I push the ball without any uh, power. I push the ball just uh, like tapping, like a putting action. You know, with the golf, the putting action is without angle with the wrist. But if you use a drive or if you use uh, another exploder or another iron in golf, you you use your 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 wrist too, right? Yes. Yeah, so. So if I can paraphrase um, and tell me if I'm incorrect in what I'm saying, some of your power, if you will, meaning just the velocity of the ball coming off the mallet will come from the arm and the um, momentum from your shoulder to your through your hips. But some of it at the very end is coming from that that. Um, change in the angle of your mallet from that 90 degrees to straight that and that's the snap of the wrist perfect perfect 
Perfect. I tell you something. I met many good players, many good players, and they just hit the ball with half a swing using the wrist and the action of the arm, and they hit a long, long distance. I give you one example. It uh, was a uh, former player, Nestor Trotz, who was a really, really good player, you know, using a lot of risk, and uh, many times he don't use a fall or this, this, all the swing, but uh, he may have a swing with a with a wrist, and he make a long distance. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's really important the action, the combination between your arm and the wrist. Uh, that's the reason that I tell many beginners, uh, please use your wrist. It's not uh, you don't hit the ground with the wrist, but you use your wrist in order to snap the ball. That is very very important. And look at the difference between a, a, a little boy. And strong man, a little boy is hitting sometimes longer because he uses a wrist, and the, long, the, the, the strong man sometimes is not using the, the wrist action, and is uh, is weak, you know, with the ball. You know what I mean? We yes. Sometimes, uh, sometimes we we are really surprised. Uh, little kids of 14 years old with the little arms, they hit the ball fantastic because they use. Uh, the combination between the speed of the arm, the speed, and the power of the arm and shoulders, and and the wrist action. Wrist action is very important. Okay, before we go on, I'm going to just keep asking some questions here, and then we can talk about um, the zero goaler and those of us who are zero and how to improve our swings here in a minute. But um, I have quite a number of people who are asking about the pre-swing, which you are doing. Um, they want, yes. to, they want to know, um, do you always do a pre-swing? I rarely see it in a game. Um, someone is asking, are you recommending a pre-swing? Why do you need a, a pre-swing? There's loads of questions about the pre-swing. Okay, the pre-swing for me is um, it's using more. Uh, the reason is that uh, you relax, you have more timing. Um, and then you have more uh, accuracy, more accurate. Um, of course, when you are playing, depends if you can use or not use, depends on the distance with your opponent. But normally, um, during, the, the, during the fast game, and you don't use the first swing, you use just the hit. The normal swing that we make a little preparation, we go with the preparation and then we hit the ball. Three swing is, um, uh, I would call that, uh, is a feeling that you have before you hit the penalty, it's a feeling that you have before you hit a knocking, it's a feeling that you have when you are relaxed and you have a, a, a more distance with your opponent. Um, of course, you, you don't use a press swing if somebody is trying to hook you. But uh, maybe use a half a swing or a little tap. But uh, press swing is um, is a tool that uh, many good players they use uh, very often. And depends on the situation, you know, which situation you are involved in the game. You understand what I mean? For sticking ball for training is very good because you you have a very good timing. You have a better training. You are relaxed. Uh, and uh, the press swing can show you the, the, the target too, exactly where you want to hit. Because you pass your mallet exactly in the target that you, you are aiming, right? Yes. You, you, I, I just realized when you said that it made perfect sense. You don't see it all that often in a game, except as you say on a knock-in or a penalty shot. But you almost, if you watch um, professional players or high goal players practice or stick and ball, they typically always have a pre-swing. So that makes exactly. total, total sense. Exactly, 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 yep. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Another question, uh, Nathaniel says, uh, what of grip and squeeze on the upon ball contact, recommended or not? Um, there is a nice uh, example with this uh, grip. Uh, you don't need to grip, you know, all the time uh, strong. You just uh, have uh, contact with the grip till the moment that you contact the ball. 
in the moment that you contact the wall is the maximum maximum squeeze, you know, the grip. It's like uh, you have, uh, you, maybe you hear this uh, example, you have a pigeon in your hand, and then you kill the pigeon when you hit the ball. It's the only moment, not before, not uh, after. Um, the, the moment that you contact the ball, this moment that you use a wrist action, you just use the squeeze the grip, and the rest of the swing, uh, you, you you have just the contact. You can uh, you don't need to make uh, enough power with you because the the you you will have uh, uh, really uh, exhausted your muscles you know, in the in the forehead. Okay, um, I have two related questions here. Um, they that two people have asked. They're similar though. So. Tim says, is the idea to move the hips forward as you strike the ball and in the follow through? And then Ali says, could you please repeat what you said previously about weight allocation on each leg when hitting the ball? So I'm going to combine those together, weight and, uh, and follow through if I could. Okay, 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 okay. The hips are very important. You know that... Um, in uh, in the riding skill, I don't want to talk about the riding skill now because it it's, will be very very long. We can make another one in the future. But um, the only uh, place that you are moving when you are uh, hitting or riding the horse, when you are riding the horse, is your um, your middle part. is uh, is not the not the the, the, the legs. Not the other the upper body. It's just you move your your hips. You use your hips. Um, you know that your gravity center is in the navel, up of the navel. You know some millimeters. And when you finish your your hit, the follow through is important to to turn your hips. You will see there in the picture now. Uh, you can see now at the end. Uh, go ahead, Charlie, with the with the follow through. Uh, the hip is going, is going, you know, in front. It's going forward. The right hip, the right hip. Um, this is the first question. Um, when I'm hitting the ball, um, go ahead, Charlie. You can see the hips now. Now with the mud, it is going the hip forward. You will see. That is exactly the moment that the hip is going forward. Hmm? You see? The right leg is going forward in relationship with the left, and the hip is turning. It's turning, it's going forward. It's following the ball. Uh, regarding the other question is uh, the weight of your body, uh, the distribution. You know how how you 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 use the weight of your your body when you hit the ball, when you make the preparation. You use the platform. Is 60% uh, of the weight is in the in the side of the hit. In this case, the forehand is in the right side. 20%. Uh, is uh, in the main, and the rest is in the other side. It's an equilibrium side. So we have uh, 60, 20, 20, more or less. Of course, it's not perfect, but uh, you put your weight in the in the offside, in the, the side of the, your your hit. Hmm? Mm -hmm. It's a feeling. You have a feeling, and it's correct that uh, this means a transfer of weight in the in the during the, the stroke mm -hmm. yes actually kit um, ha has a great observation he says your rotation shows up excellently by the fact that we see your chest at the start of the swing and then we yes. see your your back as you finish exactly exactly has to be like this so you show you show your, uh, we say, your pectorals, and finish, you know, with your back. And this is a rotation, and what is what is moving? It's moving your shoulders and your hips. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that the swing is a movement uh, between your shoulders and your hips. 
in all the sports, even tennis, golf, and of course in this case polo. If you don't stand, if you don't use your platform, you cannot use your, your swing, you cannot use your shoulders and hips in the, the, the way that I'm showing now. So that's important. Many beginners, they don't use the platform. For me, the stairs are the beginning of polo. Mm -hmm. Foundation for polo is the stairs. If you don't use the, your platform, forget about the good style and good hits. Mm -hmm. Using the platforms. Mm -hmm. And then, using your hips and your shoulders. Okay, so speaking of stirrups, I have a question, which yes. is, um, your stirrup length obviously will affect your ability to um, get the rotation in your hips. So, um, what are your thoughts on riding long versus short? Um, this is a very good question. Um, people said, you know, they asked me the same. What do you think? I have to use shorter, I have to use longer. I mean, uh, the, the, the beginning of these things is you have to feel comfortable. Um, to be in the ground, to be on the ground is comfortable because you have your feet on the ground. Talking about uh, talking about uh, boxing, talking about uh, tennis, talking about uh, golf. Okay, so you stand on the ground. Here we have the problem that the ground, in this case, is the stirrups. So you have to use uh, like the ground. So depends on your legs. Depends. How, how is uh, uh, how long are your legs? Um, of course, if you have a long legs, you have to use a little bit longer the stairs. But there is a rule that you can put a fist between your your legs and the former of the the saddle former. But I don't agree with this. For me, is uh, it's very good to to make a measure with the stairs standing. And then you can uh, stand, stand in the stairs and feel like you are standing in the ground. Forget about the rest of the, the, the positions and items and things. You have to stand exactly like uh, on the ground, but not still, you know, stiff. Uh, just relax and use your legs like, um, I would say, with the knee, a little bend in the knee, but uh, a good, good platform. It's a good feeling. If you are not in training, use a little bit longer the stirrups. If you are in good training, use a little bit shorter the stirrups. If you have a good sticking board, you know, you feel very good sticking boarding, you can go a little bit up with the stirrups. If your sticking board is not very good because you, you feel not well, your legs are not uh, strong, not training, use a little bit longer. But um, you will see that uh, to be really in the right distance with the stirrup leather, with the stirrups, is uh, standing like in the ground. You stand in the ground and bend a little bit degree the knees, just a little bit the knees, and this is a position for everybody, like tennis, like golf, like boxing. They are not with the extending knees, you know, straight the leg, just a little bit bend, and you, f you have a very good feeling, you know, with your with your back, your upper body, and your 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 stirrups, your feet. Okay, so let me just repeat that. Um, I, I think I understood. So what what I just heard you say is there. You, you know, a lot of people give you the rule to be able to put your fist uh, between the palm mm. between the pommel and your and your fork. But what you're saying is, if you just stand in your stirrups, relaxed with a little bend in your knee, similar to what you would do if you were standing on the ground or getting ready to hit a tennis ball, just very nice yes. and relaxed. If that feels good to you, that's probably kind of your base stirrup length. And then if you're fit and feeling good, you can go up. And if you're not, you could go down to get a little deeper seat. Did I, did mm -hmm. I hear that correctly? Yes, correctly. There is another, another system, but, you know, it's another... Another measure is uh, to leave the stirrups and put the feet uh, relaxed and you will see that your bones and the, the ankle, they are going exactly to the uh, platform, you know, exactly to the platform. So 
your fields are longer and your bones from the I think it's a tibial, tibial and, and peroni, they are these bones are just on the platform, just on the platform. I don't know how to explain this perfect, you know, but uh, when you stand your feet, the stirrup has to be a little bit up, just in your bone, in the tibial bone. This is the tibial bone. You understand what I mean? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will explain you again. Uh, leave your feet. Sit on the horse and leave both stirrups. Leave it free. Okay. And you will see that your, your legs are longer, right? Yes. Okay. There is a bone of the ankle inside of the bone. You can touch the bone of the ankle, right? The bone of the ankle, yes. Yes. This bone has to be exactly in the base of the platform, the base of the stirrup, when you put your feet. Got it. The stirrup should basically hit the bone in your ankle. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Okay. This is, a, this is another measure. So you go a little bit up with your, with your feet. And you put inside of the stirrup, and then you will find, you will, you will feel a really good platform, too. Mm -hmm. Good. Hey, good. And then, uh, thank you, Eduardo. And then um, uh, Ahmed says, how about the feet all in or just the toes? It looks like um, from the picture we see right now that your feet are all in. Uh, yes. In Polo, we use all in. We call full home. Full home. Full home. Um, uh, in jumping, dressage, and riding schools, they will they will uh, teach you, you know, to go um, with the uh, bone of your 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 feet, you know, put in the in the stirrup, and the, or some they say toes up, heel down. For me, it's the same. When you stay standing, when you are standing in the ground, you don't put your heel down or your toes up. You put flat. So put flat and full home for me is the best, and you have a better blood bone, a better feeling. Okay, good. Um, we have. Uh, this. Yes, yes. It's very important. Eh? Very important. This. Hmm? Um, okay. Of course, of course, when you hit the ball in different um, phases of the the hitting, uh, you will see that the feet. The toes are going up and then the toes are going down because you go with the with the with the with the leg you go to the back. Now you cannot go with the toes up if you go with the leg back. In that, that moment, you see? Mm -hmm. So you are pushing forward and it's the follow through, it's the end of the swing. So it's the follow through, you are pushing forward. This is one of the the items that they help you, you know, in order to give the ball uh, more distance. Right. And then just quickly, and then I'm going to move on to the zero goaler. We've got more questions, but I'm going to um, hold those, everybody, for um, for the zero goal. But I will just follow up, have a follow-up question from Ahmed. He says, um, what are your thoughts? Do you recommend wide platform stirrups? Um, or is that personal preference? Uh, it's a personal thing, but uh, if it's too tight, it's dangerous. If it's too tight, it's dangerous. If it's too heavy, it's dangerous. If it's a uh, normal size that uh, you can put uh, one finger in each side of your your boot, regarding you know the stirrup, and it's light, the stirrup, uh, you know, uh, some players they are now thinking about the balance with the stirrups. Um, there is another thing, you know, for polo everything has to be in balance and equilibrium. And the stirrups are very important. If it's too heavy, um, it's uh, uncomfortable. If it's too light, it's uncomfortable too. So it has to be standard. Huh? Not wide, not uh, not uh, tight, not not uh, short. And uh, I would say, you know, on balance. Yeah, and when he says wide, I don't think he means. Um, around the boot, I think he means the iron where you um, stand from front to back. They make them very wide or they make them, you know, about an inch. So some people like the wide ones because it gives them more to stand on. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I agree with this. I agree with this. You know, more wide, more wide this place, this uh, place of the stirrup is more platform and it's, uh, it's, really, it's really important. It's really important.
you know, help a lot because you feel more platform. Good. Okay. Very good. Let's, uh, Charlie, this has been great. Uh, how we're doing this, I think, and uh, we've had some great questions. We have more, but maybe we could move on to the zero goaler so we could see the difference between Eduardo's swing and uh, our zero goaler. No problem. I'll Okay, while he's looking for that, I'm going to just ask a, another question, okay? Um, uh, how does the position of the ball, this is Liz, by the way, how does the position of the ball when the mallet head connects near the front leg, further forward, etc., impact the loft and distance? Uh, you mean about the right position of the ball in order to hit the ball uh, correctly? Yeah, so in other words, is it so relative to the horse's front leg? Um, um, if, if it's further forward, you know, a little bit off the point of the shoulder versus a little bit further back, how does that impact loft or, and distance? Okay, um, if you hit too early, probably you, you lock the ball, the ball is going up. If you hit too early, it means too early is uh, early with the swing and uh, late with the ball. Uh, then it's normal, you know, for me, the position is just on top of the, your boot, your toes, and the head on top of the ball. That's mean, that means the head on top of the ball is the right position. Don't go too much uh, forward, don't go too much back. It's um, something that you have on your computer and um, this is uh, exactly the position that you have to hit the ball and then if it's too late with the swing and too early with the ball you will chop the ball you understand the three positions um, I cannot tell you if it's in the shoulder of the horse or if it's in the stirrup or if it's uh, you know, we, I don't take a, a, exactly one position regarding with the horse because must be something that you are doing, not in relationship with the horse. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. try to put the head on top of the ball with your right position on the horse, and that's it. Then you will hit the ball perfect. Maybe if you go too much forward, you are in relationship with the head of the horse, but this, you never will go in this position. Um, I mean, if you see this beginner, uh, for me, it's right because it's exactly in in the right position between the head and the ball. Maybe she's too uh, uh, too near too near the horse. This is another thing. We have uh, a name of clearance: the distance between the middle part of the horse and the ball uh, is a distance. Right, the normal distance is when you put the head on top of the ball. If the clearance is too small, probably you will you will see the ball too close to the horse, and you will uh, you will hit the ball wrong. If it's too far away, you will hit the ball wrong too, because you completely change your swing. Um, to put the head on top of the ball is the real, really important thing. Is do you don't you don't uh, you don't I would say you don't destroy your swing. You go with your swing in the perfect position. Mm. Uh, I want to see this uh, this beginner slowly. We make a different different frames, and I can tell you exactly for me what is the what is the meaning. Uh, she's coming now with the preparation. Uh, I want to see if the horse is in the right lead. Looks like. Uh, can uh, Charlie? Can you make me? Can you make me a favor? You know, can you move first a little bit? I want to see the lead of the horse. Just cantering. Okay. Okay. The horse isn't riding. The horse isn't riding. So you can go back now. She's coming into preparation. 
Okay, she's coming in the, in the preparation with the mallet up. That is very important. Uh -huh. I want to see now. I want to see now. Slowly, slowly is going now to the ball. Perfect position. Mallet up. Yes. Now she's going exactly to the. She's looking the ball. She must start now with the platform. Of course, these things uh, are important, you know, also with the balance. Horse balance is very important, you know. The canter of horse is different. Some horses, they are very deep, and some horses, they are cantering high. Um, I think it's too late, the preparation. Too late, you know, the, she's, she's making too, too fast everything. Now, she's going to the back swing. Has to go slow. Okay, wait. Uh, she's going to the to, to the other side of the horse. You know, she's broken the plane of the hit. She's going to the other side of the horse. You can see the, the mallet has to be straight to this side. It has to be parallel, you know, with the with the with the plane of the hitting. And she's going to the other side with the mallet. So that means that uh, start the first problem. You can see uh, Kim. Yes, so she's got her arm back over the back of yes. the horse a little bit. No. Yeah. Another thing, if you see the, the mallet, the head of the mallet is, is, is pointing is pointing to the camera, it's pointing here. Hmm? In the upper swing has to be pointing, you know, the, the target. Right? So the head of the mallet um, should not be at 90 degrees, or sorry, uh, uh, perpendicular to the camera. It should be kind of parallel to the path that she's swinging. Exactly, she's exactly. Yeah. So always, always the mallet, the mallet, one part of the mallet is showing, is is uh, aiming, is aiming the target. In this case, it's aiming the camera. You see? Yeah. Another way to say it is, we should be seeing the flat part of her mallet. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay, now it's going down. She's too much to the other side. You can see, you know, the arm is not in the same plane of the hitting. And that's the reason that the mallet is, the head of the mallet is, is, is aiming in another place. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Probably, probably, you know, this uh, hitting will be to the left side. Hmm? Now she's starting the, do the downswing. Platform is okay. It's, she's using the main, you know, putting the main on the horse, the hand. Um, yes. Let me see now the end. Okay. Snap action. Snap action over the wrist. It's not uh, really. Uh, this is okay. She's using, I think she's using the main. I cannot see you know, the picture exactly, but uh, I suppose the, the feet is going to the back. And let me see what happened now with the with the race action. Yes, go ahead, you know, hitting. It's okay. It's okay. It's not so much, be yeah, it's good beginner. Good, now, slowly. Going to hit the ball. Yes, and hitting the ball. Now the follow through. Okay, she's not rotating, it's not making the rotation, and I think she's finishing now. You see the difference? She's still, she's still the same, you know, when she hit the ball and the follow through for her, it's only to go up with the mallet. It's not using the shoulders and hips. And also the hip, the, 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 the feet. The foot is not going to the back. Hmm? It's not going power, you know, it's not going uh, long distance to the ball. They can help a lot when this um, this is going to the back. Not too much to the back, Charlie, but it's going to the back. 
Mm -hmm. um, if you ask me about this uh, beginner, I would say that Hasa, uh, basically she is good, but she needs uh, some things that uh, help, uh, help a lot for the distance and the accuracy. Good. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, she can be a little bit shorter the stairs, a little bit shorter. Maybe one point, one point less, or maybe half. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know if the food is, uh, the food is, the stairs is full home or is half. I cannot uh, hear, you know, I cannot see from here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but in general it's okay. General it's okay. It's a, it's a, it's a good beginning. It's a good beginning. Hmm? She needs a little bit uh, some some comments about uh, some recommendation about the preparation platform, uh, backswing, plane, and uh, follow through. But uh, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Let me ask some more of the questions then, Eduardo. Um, yes. So back to uh, grip. Kit wants to know, do you recommend one grip over another, um, butt of the mallet in the palm of your hand, or do you choke up on the handle a little bit? You mean how I, I, I take the mallet, the grip of the mallet, with, with my hand? Yes, to some some people like the thick part of the the what the butt, you know, at the end, right in the palm of the hand, or some people yes. choke up a little bit. What do you recommend? I will uh, at the end. At the end, uh, is much uh, is is better feeling for me and many players. I will ask you know how you feel, how you feel with the, you know, the grips they have numbers and different sizes, and you have that uh, you hold the, the grip. With the, your, you open the hand and you see the, the end of the fingers. When you put your your grip, has to be diagonal, exactly in the, the end of the fingers. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, this is a real good uh, good uh, lesson about it. Just to hold the mallet, um, has to be in diagonal on top of the grip and uh, in contact with your. Uh, with the end of the fingers. End of the fingers means the, the, the palm, you know, the palm, where the, the palm finish and the fingers start, right? Mm -hmm. This is the real, the real uh, place to, to hold the mallet. And then you have the action of different fingers. Mm -hmm. The index, the thumb, the middle, the annular, and the, the little one, you know, different action of each one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Nathaniel says, um, and uh, he asked this when we were talking about your swing, actually. He said, any variations to this fundamental swing? For example, increase or decrease torque? Not really. Um, uh, depends. Uh, of course, the torque depends on the distance that you want to hit. You put more torque. If you want to hit a long one, you put a less torque if you want to hit a short one, and you use less torque if you want more you want more accuracy. I go again to the goal uh, system. If you see the putter uh, hit, you don't use any torque and use a swing with the drive or the different irons, use more torque. I don't know if it's right the answer, if she wants this kind of answer. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? um, In this case, torque means distance. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think torque, right? It would be the rotation that you get. Exactly. And so the more rotation, the more transfer of weight and power, and therefore the, what you're saying is more distance. More distance, exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you are, for instance, if you are in front of the, the, the goal, the mouse of the goal, you don't use a torque, you use just uh, a tap between your shoulder and your arm. Even if you don't use uh, the action of the wrist, you know what I mean? It's like a patching grip. Mm -hmm. It's just a tap. With the speed of the ball, you tap the ball and then it's straight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, Steve wants to know where does each leg contact the horse during the swing? Uh, in the beginning, um, in the beginning, both legs in the preparation and the beginning of the swing, they are really in good contact pose. Um, and the, the contact, I would say no, not the, 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 the legs, but your, your knees and your thighs are all the time in contact with the saddle, are really um, gripping, gripping. You need the grip, you need the grip. To, in order to hit the ball right with the, with the accuracy and the torque and distance and everything. But um, at the end of the swing, you know, with the follow through, of course, uh, you relax a little bit, it's more positions and more, uh, not less knee and more thighs. You know what I mean? Um, your legs action, even riding, even hitting the ball, has to be always uh, present. Uh, the example is very easy. You can see uh, good players. They have a problem uh, with the muscles. The, the, they stretch the muscles, so they have a problem with the, with the thighs. They cannot play ball. They cannot ride. Either. So that means that it's very important the action of the legs, important from knee to to the hips, the action of the thighs and the knee action, right? Yes. Okay. Um, question from Kim. Um, most say it is best to change the mallet size with the horse height. Some say same size mallet for any horse and adjust your body accordingly. What do you say? <laughs> I agree. I'm recording with the second, the second one. Um, I can tell you the story about my friend from Carlo Carrio. He was uh, handicapped 10 for many years and he, he won the Open, Argentine Open 20 times. And he said, um, like uh, Eddie Moore also, and many good players, Gonzalo Vieres, they say, don't change the mallet regarding with the horse. Um, I would say that you, uh, you make the, you upgrade with your mallet the different sides of the horse, of course. If you have a 52 and you have a short, short horse, uh, I would say 14 hands or a petiso, you cannot use a 52 because it's uncomfortable. You have to stand to hit the ball. But when I'm talking about the normal size that is uh, between 52, 53, and different horses, I will make the accurate, accurate you know, with the, with the, with the same mallet. Um, if it's a huge difference, of course, okay, maybe we change the mallet, but uh, between 52 and 53, it's more or less the same, and even 51. Uh, if you see the players, the good players, the open or different tournaments in the world, when they change the horse, they, they, they hold the mallet and they brush the ground a little bit just in order to make uh, the calibration with the knee. I told you about this, it's very important. Everybody, we have uh, a computer in our name, and then we put in the computer exactly the distance between the hand and the ball, that is the mallet. And then you go ahead. You need a good computer. Okay. Um, I have a, we're, we're getting close to uh, the end. Here, I have a few more questions that I'm going to ask. Before I do, I want to just uh, tell everybody, uh, because I don't want to lose people, a few things. Um, Charlie and Eduardo have been kind enough to offer a free video analysis of your swing, like we've done uh, here for this gal. Um, and um, the way that you let us know, we will give away one of those that we will draw for it. And the way that you um, let us know that you are interested in that is as you leave the webinar, there is a survey form. And on the survey, it will ask you, would you like to be entered in the drawing for the free video analysis? I would ask that if you're not real, it, it requires you to have to film yourself from the side like this. So if you're not going really going to do that, don't take the spot or the potential away from someone who really is going to do it. Um, so serious inquiries only, please. Um, but that's how you do it. Fill out the survey that you will see on your way out. 
Um, I also would quickly just like to mention, we have about four or five more questions. We're going to get through them quickly. I'm going to go over by just a few minutes, um, Charlie, so you might want to go back to the uh, Eduardo if you would. Um, however, um, I also just want to mention internationalpoloacademy.com is uh, the website for them. They've been very kind and generous with their time and their expertise. So if you would like to have a look at that and get more information, um, do that. And uh, I will send out the links to the uh, both this archive as well as these videos that um, Charlie and, and Eduardo have been using. So with that, um, just in case people need to drop off here, since we said we would finish uh, at half past the hour, I'm going to finish up these last four questions and then we're going to end. Um, so quickly, uh, Samuel says, um, in the video online, the downward part of the swing is quite fast. Eduardo said, count one. I've also heard that one should try and swing slowly to enable the wrist action. Any commentary on the fast swing in the video versus the swing slow advice one typically hears? In other words, I think what he's saying, Eduardo, is that it appears that your downswing is much faster than the count of one. Exactly. Um, if we divide the swing in three parts, the first one is the back swing, the second one downswing, and the third one is the forward swing, you have to to make a difference of timing. The first one, that is uh, the, the back swing, is like in all the sports, like in golf, is slow, slow, to get the position up at the swing, and then you start the down swing, that is the speed. You give the speed, and you give, uh, I would say power, but I don't like to say power, because you don't use power, it's just uh, exactly the, the speed of the mallet. Um, uh, and then the momentum that you contact the ball and the follow through is uh, depends on the speed of the mallet. So I would say that the first one is, um, is uh, slow, the second one is uh, fast, and the third one is uh, medium. Depend, you know, depends on uh, how, how long you want the, the distance of the ball. But it's very important to count one to three and then one with the with downswing, right? Okay, good. Um, next question from Leslie. The zero goaler, so she's back to uh, to the zero goaler. The zero, but uh, we can just I think you can just answer rather than oh there we go. Charlie's on the spot. She says the zero goaler does not seem to have a good line down the arm and into the line of vision of the ball. This should be a straight line, no? In the moment that they contact the ball, when she contact the ball, there. Oop. I think it's straight. I think it's straight. You know, the arm and the and the mallet and the ball. And she put the head on top of the ball. The only thing that I can see from here, because it's, differ, it's difficult to, to hear the plane, means that uh, she, is, uh, she is a little bit, um, the ball is too close to her. I think the ball is too close. Um, yeah, it's just, just you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a plastic ball also, you know, it's an it's a indoor ball. Uh, we can say that the ball has to be a little bit uh, in front, forward, just a little bit forward. But um, I have the impression that it's, it's too close to the horse, and she's not uh, she's not uh, using the, the moment of the, 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 the platform. Uh, we have uh, three parts in the in the, in the, hit. the first one is. Um, uh, first seat is uh, is, a, is this one. The second one is a half a seat, and the third one is the hitting platform. The hitting platform is, I think, is too close. She put too close the ball in relation to the horse. This is my opinion from here. Oh, okay. She's, so she's, she's not leaning out. You know, she's she's she can stay sitting there and 
she's not putting her head on top of the ball because the ball is too close to the horse. This is my opinion from here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Paula says, uh, how far do you keep swinging the mallet after the stroke is complete? Do you keep swinging around another half swing, in other words, that little tw twirl, or do you get back to the upright position to get ready to swing again? Um, we use, we use uh, the Argentine style. That is, um, uh, you will see, you can show Charlie a little bit. Uh, you see that the mallet is going, we don't make any power. First of all, I don't want to see a guy that is stopping the mallet because it's unnecessary to, to damage your, your arm and your wrist stopping the mallet. So this means like um, you can make a, a round, you can make a round without stopping the mallet. Just the wrist is, is, uh, is leaving the action. You will see that the elbow is not moving and the wrist is working. Go ahead, tell you a little bit. You will see now the wrist action also when they finish, you know, the follow through. Hmm? And the, the elbow is going a little bit up, but the, the, the arm is not moving. Right? Now you go to the preparation if you want. You stop. You don't need to stop the mallet. It's just um, it's a, it's a, it's a natural movement. Any, in, any, in any moment, I'm stopping the mallet. All those things, like uh, the pressing and the follow-through, like you're looking now, they help you a lot with the muscle actions, and you don't uh, feel uh, any power. You don't make any power to stop the mallet. Okay, I'm going to take two more, and then, uh, and then we have to quit. Um, you understand, you understand, you understand the, the race action, you know, when you finish. You don't stop the mallet. I am not stopping the mallet. Another thing with the follow through, the perfect one, if you leave the mallet without uh, gripping, the mallet is falling the ball. If I make power with the follow through and I leave the, the mallet free, if I make power with the follow through, the mallet is going to the back, it's not falling the ball. You understand what I mean? I can you explain again. Now, suppose that we don't have the, the, the strap and I finish the swing with the follow through and I open my hand, the mallet has to go following the ball, the same direction of the ball. If it's wrong because I make power in the follow through, when I open my hand, the, the mallet is going to the back. That is wrong, right? Okay. I'm not mm -hmm. sorry. I'm not sure I got that part. It's very easy. After the hit, the follow through, you open your hand. If it's a good hit and a good follow through, the mallet is, you leave the mallet free, it's going to the ball. It's, going, it's following the ball, right? Yes. If you make power in order to stop the mallet, you make power, you go with the mallet to the back because you make power in order to stop the mallet and you open the hand. The mallet is going to the back in the opposite way of the ball. Yes. Okay. Now, in opposite. Now, if you if you go a little bit to the back, stopping the the, the mallet, no, and then you leave you leave the mallet, making power. The mallet is going to the back. So the right position now is to follow the ball with the mallet. It's a good follow through. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Without power, no power in any place, any moment of the, the swing, you have to make power. Any moment. Just speed from the downswing to in, during the downswing. Now, in this position, you make speed there. Full speed with the mallet, wrist action, and now the follow through. Right? Without stopping, no power. Hmm? Okay. Okay, next question. One, two more. Um, Bill says, do you shift your hips slightly away from your striking side to maintain your center of gravity over the center of gravity of the horse? Can you make me again the, the question, please? Can you repeat? Yes. So he says, do you shift your hips slightly away from your striking side 
In other words, you shift your butt a little bit to the near side to maintain your center of gravity over the center of gravity of the horse. Or no? Um, I don't go too much to the other side. I don't need to go to the other side. I understand what he means about the gravity center of the horse. Um, everything is on top of the gravity center of the horse. I don't need to go to the other side. I be, you know, I mean, you know, I'm moving, you know, the, the, I shift my, 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 my hip um, enough to go forward with the, with the shoulder, but not, not too much to go to the other side. And I keep my gravity center, I keep my, my balance with the horse, with the platforms. One side and the other side. The right side with the stirrup and the, the left side with the, with the knee and my, my toes, my, my feet is going up in the other side in order to maintain the gravity center in the right place. It's equilibrium, right? You understand what I mean? Yes. Yes. Then the leg, the leg in the other side is a, the equilibrium leg. And he's using in order to be on the gravity center of the horse. Uh, I like to work with the gravity center of the horse because for me it's everything. Everything of the comfort on top of the horse is on the gravity center. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, uh, all right, last question. Um, Rita says, how do you time yourself when hitting the ball at full speed? I know this uh, is definitely a yeah. problem for, for newer players as the game gets yeah. faster. It's a very, very good question, and it's very, very important. Thank you for this question because we will clear many things. How fast you go with the horse? Less speed with the mallet, less speed with the mallet, and how less you go with the horse in speed, more speed with the mallet. You know, it's uh, inversion proportional, you know, with this. And it's very important because when you go fast with the horse, try to go slow with the, with the swing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have enough timing, go fast with the horse and have a swing all the time. So you will see the good players, position one, Going, you know, from the middle, from the center of the ground, is going half a swing, half a swing, half a swing, with the full speed and slow, slow, half a swing. Um, this is something like everybody has to learn about the, the timing regarding with the speed of the horse. Don't forget how much fast you go with the horse, less speed you make with the mallet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. We're going to end there. Um, we went a little bit over, but I think uh, since the questions kept coming, I, I realize there are still more questions that we didn't answer you all. But um, if you have a burning question, Charlie um, has put up the email address for uh, the International Polo Academy down there. Um, so I know that you can uh, reach out to them and uh, as well and get your um, questions answered. I, I really want to um, say thank you so much, both uh, Charlie and, and Eduardo. This has been great and helpful, and, and I appreciate your time and, and generosity. And thank you to the attendees as well, because you asked some great questions, and, and I know those helped your fellow attendees get a lot out of this webinar. So um, that's it for tonight. We are recording this. We will post it on the Polo Skills website here within uh, generally takes us about a week to get that up and we will also uh, try to send you the videos that uh, Charlie and Eduardo used in uh, in the webinar today and if you are interested in having your swing analyzed be sure and fill out the survey at the end even if you're not please fill out the survey at the end um, Charlie has offered to do some more of these on the backhand and near side if you find it helpful so please let us let us know and uh, spread the word so that we get more people on these calls. That's it for, for us. Thanks, you guys. Uh, Charlie, anything you want to say in closing, by the way? No, just a thank you. Thank you all for, for attending, and hopefully we'll do some more webinars in the future, um, hopefully the near, near future. And, um, yeah, thank you, Kim.
Good. All right. Good night, everybody. See you. Send, um, send your team and send to everybody also. Yeah. Thank you, Eduardo. That was great. See you. See everybody on the polo field. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Charlie, can you see that? Yeah, I'm still here.